What's going on, everyone? Welcome to week two of ARC's Pokemon Draft League. This week, we are playing against our good friend, good buddy, Measly, and the Sutopolis Sceptiles. He has had uh, my number for the last few games. I, I think I've lost maybe my last two games that I've played with him, uh, dating back a couple of seasons. So uh, I'm out for, for a little bit of revenge in this game. So uh, we're both sitting at 1-0. and So, you know, winner of this game likely has a pretty good pretty good hold on the division after the first two weeks but uh nonetheless we just want to come in we want to play well we want to play solid and we want to see uh what we can make out of it so we're gonna transition right on into the game here if you guys are interested in checking out the team i will leave a pokey paste uh in the description below alongside our full team builder if you guys want to watch that as well but if not we're just gonna hop right on into the game hopefully 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 we do well and uh we'll catch you guys on the other side all right, and here we are, everybody, ready to rock and roll with our game against Mr. Measley. We have post-commentary for today. I apologize. But he brings Hitmonchan, Cramorant, Jolteon, Bastiodon, P2, and the Delphox, which is a pretty solid roster and nothing too, like, surprising apart from Cramorant. I don't know if I was really expecting Cramorant to come to this game, but uh, it's a cool mom nonetheless. So uh, as we pop into the game here, I just want to go Zazu immediately uh, because I am anticipating just a Bastiodon lead right away. Uh, so I can freely set up my Tailwind and I can start going for some uh, cool moves here. So um, he knows that I could be Terra Ground. So he goes for a Metal Burst <laughs> right away, which is actually insane. Um, but obviously it's going to fail. We get up our Tailwind, which is really nice. Uh, but I don't want to deal with losing my two cannon this early. So I just decide to go into my Nido King, and he pivots into his Porygon too. Uh, so at this point, I feel pretty confident that I can get up a T-Spike here, and I should be pretty okay. P2 sets are pretty defensive in nature, uh, and I should be able to live a Psychic for the most part. Or so I thought. Uh, I go for a T-Spike, and he absolutely obliterates me with a Psychic. Uh, turns out this is like a very specially <laughs> invested Porygon 2. This thing is nasty in the tier that we're playing in. It's so, so bulky. And obviously with analytic can do a lot of damage in return. And maybe that's something that I, I, I didn't uh, figure in <laughs> as well. So I feel like at this point, it's probably safe for me to go into my Lilith. Obviously Shadow Ball is going to hurt, but I can set up a light screen and I can hopefully pivot out into something a little bit better. So I decide to go into thinking that Sacred Fire is a really solid option, but he does have Discharge. So then I pivot through to my Torterra. Now this, this was a really pivotal turn for the game. In prep, obviously, I have a Blastoise and a Torterra. It's a very, very decent assumption that Mirror Herb is just going to be a, a, an item that is run by many of my opponents if this is what I decide to do. Um, so in this moment, I was like, you know what? There's no way that the first person, like, there's there's no way that it happens today, right? Um, so against my better judgment, even though I just felt in the pit of my stomach that it was a bad plan, I go for a Shell Smash, and lo and behold, it's Mirror Pitmonchan. And I know that he's going to have Ice Punch, so I pretty much have to go into my Blastoise here to take the hit, and I have to let him hit close combat here uh, and knock out my Blastoise. So... Uh, honestly, throughout the course of this game, and obviously I don't want to John, but I just did not feel comfortable in this game. At this point in the game, I feel like I've already lost. Um, like, I don't really have the offensive output and the ability to pivot around some of his threats. So at this point, I kind of just reserve myself to playing for differential. There is still a chance. I, if I get the right setup with like two cannon and stuff, it could be fine. Uh, and I'm hoping that I can just maybe threaten out the Hitmonchan with like a potential E-speed. Maybe he thinks I'm choice banded here. Um, but I just did not feel in the Pokemon uh, mindset for this game. And he obviously brought a really solid team and really solid prep. Um, <laughs> but we're going to try and climb ourselves back into this game regardless. So he does go Terra Fighting. I go for a Sacred Fire. Unfortunately, we don't get a burn. And Body Press does a billion to me. So obviously, I don't want that to happen again. And I go into my two cannon because I know I can take one. And then I still have my Sky Attack play as well. So out comes Delphox. I am assuming that he's probably not a Choice Scarf set or like a Choice Spec set. Um, so I decide right here that I am going to go for a Tailwind once again. And I'm going to get my Zazu rocking so he goes for a psychic we take a little bit of chip damage goes back into p2 i decide here that i'm going to go for my terra ground and we do negligible damage however 
sheer force boosted sky attack does tons of damage and ironically enough i don't think that this crit mattered <laughs> um after looking at his team it was a pretty close roll uh but i would have had to like bottom bottom roll for this not to kill so there is hope and zazu is starting to to bring us back in however with my power herb being used up i can't take a body press and nothing i have here once or is able to kill the bastion at this point so i pretty much have to go into my frost last and at this point I have only physical attackers left. He is poisoned, and I think that maybe, like, potentially, the rest of this move set could be just like a rest plus iron defense set. And I really don't want him to set up on me at all, so I just decide to go for a taunt, which, in all honesty, was probably not a good play either. I probably should have just gone for a reflect there, maybe tried to live and then set up another screen, uh, and then potentially maybe gone into like Torterra to try to get the shell smash off again. Um, I think maybe that was probably the better play, but I decide here to go for a gunk shot. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to pick up a kill. Poison is going to drop down just a little bit further. And without the screen, I have to go Entei. And as you can see, like this end game, I just, I just played so sloppy this whole game. Uh, red card is also just a really, really great set too. The extra insurance for shell smash and getting swept, like he tunneled so hard on not getting swept, but honestly, it worked perfectly for him. Like my Torterra was never able to make an impact at all. And he was able to pivot around it like flawlessly. So all the credit to, to to Peyton in this game. He played it super well. He brought a perfect team. I do preserve a point of differential here <laughs> with, with an E-speed. Uh, I need a crit here to even like potentially get myself back in. But I just decide to click Sacred Fire because it's the strongest move that I have. Uh, and Jolteon is just going to take me out. So I am going to do a little bit of damage control late in this game. Uh, the result definitely could have been much worse than what it was uh but you know that's just the way that things go so ggs to my opponent uh we will catch you in the post game talk where we'll break things down just a little bit farther thanks for watching and here we are back for another Terrytown post game talk um wow what a game uh all the credit to my opponent like i like i i really I don't have any words like uh, he played well. He prepped well. I did not prep well and I did not play well. So he deserves to win um, in this game. I think maybe the ideas were just a little bit too straightforward. Uh, definitely kicking myself for the Torterra play. I just had a sinking suspicion that a mirror herb was going to come out. So maybe should have tried to test the waters a little bit and just go for like a headlong rush or something um, and just try and get damage. But my, my threats were just like so dwindled and thrown away for no reason. It's like I, ha I had to give up Blastoise because of that play. Um, I didn't respect an offensive Porygon set or the fact that it could get Psychic and my Nido King was just gone as well um so he just he just brought really good checks and he brought really solid items for everything he like by god he in his prep i'm sure he was like by god i'm not getting swept by shell smash um which he wasn't uh he totally flipped the script on me and you know the hitmonchan was really hard to difficult like difficult to to work around i'm pretty sure that Eastby didn't even kill hitmonchan so he probably could have just killed my entei there too um but luckily for us, you know, we were able to preserve a few points of differential um, and we only lost this game 3-0. But if we want to do better and if we want to win and if we want a potential chance at one of those top two playoff spots, um, we're going to have to lock it down. You know, we're going to have to play a lot better. We're going to have to respect the options that our opponents bring and we're going to have to um, to to make do with what we have. So uh, moving forward then. Um, I was just kind of looking at my team, kind of thinking of things that we need to do because it's only a five game regular season with everyone making playoffs. Um, I thought to myself, it's like, you know, with Terra Terra and Blastoise, everyone is going to be prepping for Shell Smash every single week. So uh, I feel like Torterra's usefulness on my team specifically was going to be very few and far in between. Uh, I could run some defensive sets with it, but it just didn't seem like it was going to be good. Uh, so ultimately, I made the decision to drop Torterra from the team along with Frostless. Uh, and instead, I picked up a Lycanroc and a Dun Sparse, which is really, really cool. And I think that I have some good versatility with those options uh, moving into our week three match who i am unsure of uh who we are playing in that game let me double check just uh a second here 
So next week, it looks like we're playing against Hooper, which is going to be awesome because I haven't played Hoop in, in a while now. So uh, really looking forward to that game. He's always uh, a pleasure to play and uh, always a pleasure to play Measley as well. He's beat me like the last three times. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I really, really hope I get a rematch uh, later this season against him. So uh, I'm just going on at this point like I always do. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Apologize for the bad game, but you know what happens. Uh, that's Pokemon. Sometimes you're not going to play the best. Uh, so we'll keep moving forward. We'll keep playing well, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Thank you guys so much for the support. We're almost, almost getting to that 200 subscriber mark, uh, and I couldn't do without you guys. So thanks for that. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.